Hey everyone, it's Melissa McGinnis with Ecotopia U Media. We're coming to you live today from Anaheim. We're enjoying the first day of the Natural Products Expo, which takes place in Anaheim every year. I'm joined by my co-star, Tom Wright, and a very special guest today, Joel D. Joel's been a pioneer in the natural foods movement for 25 years. 35. Oh my goodness, 35 years. Tell me a little bit about your history, how you got started in the natural products movement. I was 25 years old back in 1978 when I first introduced my first product. It largely grew out of <coughs> excuse me, my frustration as a consumer not being able to find any natural uh, nutrition, that something naturally nutritious to eat that wasn't laced with preservatives or additives. And this was what, like what year? Were, were your it started in 1976. It took okay. about two years to develop my first item, which is something called miso cup, an instant miso soup. Miso cup. Still around today, I'm happy to say. This is wonderful for on the go. And today it's not unusual to have things which are natural and on the go. Mm -hmm. But if you can think back or imagine back into the late <laughs> 1970s, Convenience and natural foods were considered to be opposites or an oxymoron, really. Convenience health foods was considered to be uh, something that people would not be interested in. So the industry at that time did not really know who its consumer was going to become, which mm -hmm. is all of us. So you were really filling a need for yourself. That's really it. And now I know in hindsight what I didn't realize when I was 25, which is that's really classic entrepreneurial story. Oh, okay. When you need something for yourself and you develop it for yourself, oftentimes other people are also in need of something similar. And so when you were developing this uh, back in 76, did you have to talk about organic back then? Like, how did you position your, your company? Um, we were positioned ourselves and continue to position ourselves as a natural food company, but the term natural food, of course, has changed in its meaning or lack of meaning over the years. Organic had no definition in the 1970s either, and it was only by work of the industry over many years that with the industry and the government that there now is a USDA organic standard mm -hmm. so that we all know what it means when we see something that's called organic in the United States. Mm -hmm. In those days, we didn't know what it was. So some ingredients may have been organic, some ingredients not organic. People were making claims and so forth. So we sidestepped all of that and said, let's just use common sense and keep it simple. If I can have ingredients that everyone recognizes that you could grow in your backyard and not long chemical names, People will understand inherently that's a natural product when compared to something which comes out of a chemistry lab. How important is the word organic to you today? Well, it's very important, but not only for reasons why often people say, well, is organic product healthier for you to eat or not healthier? Does it have more vitamins? The scientists are still back and forth about that. Mm -hmm. In my view, organic has to do with a lifestyle choice. It has to do with an environmental or sustainability choice. Mm -hmm. We want to participate in systems which are protective of the planet, not which are uh, continuing to rob nutrients from our soil so that we can get through this season of products. We want to continue to reestablish and nurture soil so that it's better in each succeeding generation. So organic really has to do with a position regarding not just our own health but also planetary health. Mm -hmm. So do you go to store your for your products you're sourcing organic? Well wherever possible we will do organic products so mm -hmm. we have now from one item probably about 120 different items under different brands which we own but um, wherever possible we'll do certified organic products. I will say that the market oftentimes will not pay the premium that certified organic requires. Mm -hmm. And as such, when consumers will not shell out for organic, then we will look for a what we consider to be a natural alternative. Again, the word natural is one which gets bandied about a lot and is often villainized because a lot of organic supporters believe that natural kind of robs the organic um, value, gets con confuses consumers. Mm -hmm. But there are very clear differences, and there's a purpose, in my view, for both natural and organic in the there's marketplace. There's a place at, at for the, both it to coexist. At the same time, you even in your natural products, there are no added preservatives. Oh no, no preservatives, no, no GMOs. GMOs, no GMOs, no colorants. Right. Okay. So, and then the overarching name of your company is Edward and Sons Trading Company. Where did that come from? Where did the name come from? Originally, the company was going to be Free Will Foods. When I first Free will foods. Yes. yes. The idea like being... In the, like in the rock song. Well, I think the idea yeah. was we... I didn't want to be some, telling people what they should eat. Yeah. I wanted to make options available to them. Okay. 
So that was the idea, and I had a nice logo design with the stallion on a horizon <laughs> rearing up. But I was very nervous because I was 25 years old going into an industry where I knew no one except for a couple of people who told me that I was insane to be introducing this kind of product because nobody wanted it. <laughs> so I was nervous to say the least, and um, I had a dream actually, and in the dream the name Edward and the Sons uh, came to me. My father's name is Edward, I got it. and I wouldn't have a business sense if it wasn't for my father's efforts when I was younger. And um, so in the dream when it came to Edward and Sons Trading Company, I realized in three words it gave the impression of being around for generations and it made me feel more solid. Uh -huh. And That's a wonderful well, story. Ultimately, Edward and my brothers became shareholders of the company and it now really is Edward and Sons. Oh, that's, really very, that's a very cool... Mm -hmm. That's a great story. And, I'm glad and, that you asked that. Then, then what brands do you, do you... What are your brands? Yeah, let's talk about... So you started with this great soup. Where are you Miso at today? You, you, you're a conglomerate. Well, Miso... <laughs> I don't know about that. We're, we're still a family independent business. But um, Miso Cup took me to Japan, mm -hmm. where I discovered rice crackers. But in Japan, people were only making rice crackers out of white rice. My int interest was in brown rice. So I, the next product line was called Brown Rice Snaps, which was a way of evolving Asian-type rice crackers with whole grain nutrition and simple ingredients. Uh, and those were done under the Edward and Sons masthead. Then we've introduced a brand called Native Forest, which is all sorts of interesting uh, organic and natural canned items that otherwise wouldn't be available, organic canned pineapple, for example. We were the first to introduce organic coconut milk to the United States oh, under the wonderful. Native Forest brand. Wow. Um, so that's one of our brands. Another brand is Let's Do Organic, which is a brand that we where we do organic ice cream cones and a whole line of organic things for the home baker. So tapioca starch and cornstarch, both organic, organic coconut flour, different oh, kinds wow. of things. We do organic sprinkles for our organic <laughs> ice cream cones, by the way. Most <laughs> likely, you're probably consuming, eating, baking with Some one of, of his stuff. products. Absolutely. Well, I, I, I just want to say thank you, one, for sharing your story, and two, for really having the foresight to do what you've done. And, and like you're saying, it's a bigger theme. It's not just eating healthy, but it's also protecting the environment and, and really thinking about these systems. Well, we're all part of something from, by our choices, both consumer choices and our choices of what to eat. So we're, they're all, the repercussions are bigger than just that moment, and it behooves us to be a bit aware of it. Well, thank you for helping spreading that message and spreading the good food. Now we can eat on the go, actually healthy, good food. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thank nice you very to meet much. you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Sure.